Hi guys, it's Summers here. The RB15 broke cover in a stunning new testing library at Silverstone on Wednesday, and I can't help thinking, why not just race it? It's probably better than the one they intend to use anyway. As soon as I got over the disappointment that it was just a testing library, I thought I'd best check out the car. Another one that's absolutely stacked full of goodness and ready for us to tear down. The front wing bears all the hallmarks of its predecessor, with the necessary changes made to comply with the new regulations. The main plane and flaps are arched near the Y250 juncture to help with the creation of that vortex, whilst the steady rise in the outboard section creates a double-edged footplate, which leads to a small lip on the inside and a slightly squared off arc on the outside. We can also see from the side view how the footplate tapers off toward the back of the wing, working with the outwardly angled end plate. The nose carries over the DNA of the RB14, utilising the open face thumb style nose tip and Narca style S duct inlet on the flank. However, they've had a change in philosophy when it comes to their turning vanes, as the forward elements which are flared out have a Ferrari feel to them and are seemingly covering up some additional under nose and chassis inlets, perhaps used to fully power the new S duct outlet. The outlet, which is a bit of an animal, sits proud of the vanity panel and features a distinctive lip as it ramps upwards. Much like a gurney extension, I'd expect this to trip the airflow and improve not only localised flow over it, but also enhance the flow through the S duct. The barge boards mimic those used at the end of last season, albeit a lower configuration. However, whilst the height of the barge board should be low for 2019, it appears that Red Bull have interpreted the regulations slightly differently, as the forwardmost element still sits at the full height it did last year. This has also allowed them to mount the boomerang wing that seen here last year, that creates a bridge between the barge boards and the deflectors, the forward element of which is also shorter this year. Red Bull have pressed on with the periscope style side pod inlets that they introduced last season, with the innermost section of the inlet seeming like it may have been reduced in height even further still. The wing mirrors and their mountings are a thing of absolute beauty, and perhaps my favourite design feature of the new car so far. Not only have they taken the exposed mirror housing solution from last year a step further, I think they've run off into the distance with it, as the sweeping mirror mounts are not only placed perfectly to aid the side pod's performance, they also wrap around the mirror in a way that flies in the face of the new regulations that are designed to actually prevent this sort of thing. The side pod bodywork is even further shrunk in around the back of the car, as it almost disappears in the three quarter view, showing just how well packaged the Honda Power unit is, and if that's not a size zero rear end, then I don't know what is. The size of the side pods, airbox and relative scale of the engine cover would suggest that some of the oil coolers and rads are placed over and around the power unit for better, albeit more complex packaging. The rear wing is pretty much as you'd expect, save the inclusion of a section that's lent away from the rest of the end plate on the rear edge of the bounding line in the transition region, which is a definite trend amongst the field this year. The RB15 is another step on from its predecessor with some very interesting elements thrown into the mix, but the big question remains, have Honda added enough performance and will they be reliable enough? Fingers crossed as we're in for one hell of a championship if they have. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to slap a like on it and also subscribe to my channel for more Formula 1 content.